Hey guys, let's do some FLL. So pull out lesson 67 and we'll get started. So today we're talking about sentences with more than one direct object, predicate nominative, or predicate adjective. Remember, action verbs have direct objects, something that receives the, the verb, the action of the verb. Linking verbs have predicate nominatives, and they have predicate adjectives. Now they may not have both, they may just have one adjective or one um, nominative, but it, linking verbs have predicate nominatives or adjectives, direct, um, action verbs have direct objects. Okay, first we're going to talk about direct address. If I were to say, hey Grant, bring me some chicken wings, and I d directly talk to Grant, that is called direct address. I'm directly addressing Grant, okay? Um, so when you write a sentence that's calling someone's attention, directly addressing them, um, you use a comma to separate the name of the person you're addressing from the rest of the sentence. So let's look at exercise one and look at our rule. We use a comma to set off a noun of direct address. So for my sentence, um, I'll just shorten it. Grant, comma, bring me wings. See, there's his name, that's who I'm addressing. I have a comma before the rest of my sentence. So with that, let's look at exercise one. Okay, first sentence, Chelsea, may I borrow your calculator? Notice, Chelsea is who they're talking to. What follows Chelsea? A comma. Chelsea, comma, may I borrow your calculator? Number two, please, Kyle, do not interrupt me. Okay, notice here. The noun of direct address isn't at the beginning of a sentence. It's in the middle. It has commas on both sides of it. So please, comma, Kyle, comma, do not interrupt me. Okay, there's commas on both sides of the noun of direct address. And number three. I can't find my glasses, Mr. Simpson. Okay, here, the noun of direct address comes at the end of the sentence. So the comma goes before the noun of direct address. I can't find my glasses, comma, Mr. Simpson. The key is you want commas, if it's at the beginning, to come after, if it's in the middle, to come before and after, and if it's at the end, to come before, okay? To offset that noun of direct address. Woo, where'd that hair come from? Just get back there. Don't bother me, hair. Okay, so a noun of direct address does not have a function in the sentence. It's not the subject, nor is it the object. So when you diagram a sentence with a noun of direct address, okay, the noun is placed on a line that floats above the rest of the diagram. It doesn't go anywhere on the diagram itself. It goes on the line floating above it because it doesn't do anything. It gets the attention of who you're speaking to, but it's not the subject. It doesn't do anything. So let's look at exercise two. I think these are already diagrammed for you. I want you to put your finger on the noun of direct address and notice where it's floating. So our sentence, Chelsea, may I borrow your calculator? Remember with questions two when we're diagramming, we have to rearrange some of the words, right? So instead of Chelsea, may I borrow your calculator? Really, we can rearrange the sentence to I may borrow your calculator, right? Because to diagram questions, we have to rearrange things so that we get the subject and we can identify the subject and the, and the verbs and um, the direct object. So if we rearrange it, it comes to may borrow in our verb line, may being a helping verb, borrow being an action verb, borrow what? What's our direct object? Calculator. Who wants to borrow it? Who's doing the borrowing? I. I is our subject. Your is an adjective that describes 
whose calculator? Your calculator. And then notice Chelsea, our noun of direct address, who we're talking to, goes on a floating line above the diagram. Chelsea's not on the diagram. She's floating above it. She can fly. Okay. Number two and three are pretty similar, right? But, but let's look at two because it's a different type of sentence. It's not a question, right? So please, Kyle, do not interrupt me. Here, it's a command. Remember with commands, sometimes we don't have a subject written in our sentence, but it is an understood you, okay? That's when we put it in parentheses, right? You do this or you do that. It's a command, right? I don't have to say, um, hey, Grant, you bring me those wings, right? Hey, bring me wings. If I said, bring me wings, Grant, it's understood I'm talking to him, so you bring me wings, right? I actually don't like chicken wings. I should have picked a better food. What's my favorite food? Curry? Hey, Grant, bring me some curry. Or, um, what are some other foods I like? Like peanut butter? Just bring me the whole jar of peanut butter with a spoon. Leave me in here. That's all I need all day long. That's neither here nor there. Let's keep going. So, here in sentence number two on exercise two, please, Kyle, do not interrupt me. Okay? Let's look. We need to find our verbs. Do interrupt. Okay? <laughs> That'd be bad. But those are our verbs. Do and interrupt. Do is a helping verb. Interrupt is an action verb. The not is like an adjective describing or maybe an adverb. Not's a weird one. Um, but it's describing uh, do the verb interrupt. So it would be an adverb. Adjectives don't describe verbs. Adjectives describe nouns. So it's an adverb. Also, please describes um, do interrupt. I'm not sure what please is in this. What part of speech please is, but it's acting like an adverb. Please do interrupt not. That one's tricky. Okay. Who do we not want to interrupt? Who's our direct object? Me. And then the subject is an understood you. Okay. Maybe Grant heard my yelling for peanut butter. Grant, is that you? Maybe not. I thought he was going to bring me more coffee, actually, but alas, he's not here. That would have been a fun appearance. Okay. So you is our subject, okay? You do interrupt, not me, okay? But look, here's the important part. Where is Kyle? <laughs> Kyle is floating and flying above this diagram, okay? So he doesn't get a spot on the diagram itself. He doesn't serve a purpose for a diagram. So he goes above it. He's on a floating line above it, okay? I think you get the idea, so we're going to skip number three. And I want you... These sentences look easier, the ones you are going to diagram. So go ahead, pause pause me and do exercise three on your own. Um, I'll do them here too and we'll compare. But um, yeah, go ahead, pause, do those two sentences, diagram those two sentences in exercise three. And then um, you can unpause me and we'll go over the answers. So. Remember always to, when diagramming, first thing you want to find in diagram is your verb. That helps you do the rest of it. Alright, I'm going to flip. So, 
here is our first one. Okay. First sentence, pack your bags quickly, Aunt Louise. I wonder where they're going. So first thing first, you find your verb, pack. Okay, pack. It's capitalized here, right, because it is the first word in the sentence. So pack. Okay, who's doing the packing? Well, we're talking, we're giving a command to someone, but we don't say exactly who. So it's an understood you. Since it's not actually written out, we have it in parentheses. You pack, pack what? What is our direct object? Pack bags. Okay, so bags goes on our direct object line. Pack bags. And then um, pack, how are they packing? Packing quickly, that's an adverb. Remember, adverbs describe verbs. So pack how, pack quickly. Whose bags? Your bags. So your is an adjective. Where's Aunt Louise? She's flying above this sentence in the diagram. She's up here. She doesn't serve a purpose. That's mean to say about Aunt Louise. Aunt Louise has her purposes, but right now she's floating above the diagram. Okay, number two. You can pause me and do it. You might have already done it. I've got to do it over here though, so take some time. Take a little breather. I'm gonna find my verb, find my direct object, find my subject, find my adverb, find my adjective, find my floater. Noun of a direct address. Okay. All right, Marty, dry the dishes later. Not a good time to dry those dishes, Marty. Dry them later. So, first thing first, find our verb. Verb is dry. Who's doing the drying? Well, it's a command. So it's an understood you. Dry what? What's our direct object? Dry dishes. Okay, later describes, is an adverb that describes when he is to dry them. The is an adjective to describe what dishes the dishes. And Marty. Useless Marty. Um, except he's not useless. He's wanting to dry dishes. Just not allowed to right now. Um, it's floating, flying above our diagram. Okay? Alright, let's move on. Exercise four. We're looking at the rule and here's the rule. Use commas to separate items in a series. So items in a series can be nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, or whole phrases, many words together. So for each of these, read the sentence, underline the items in the series, and draw arrows pointing to the commas. Let's talk through the first one together, and then I'll set you loose. Number one, we planted tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. Okay, so we're underlining the items in the series, and we're drawing arrows to the commas. So let's look again. We planted tomatoes. Okay, that's our first item in the series, tomatoes. Peppers is our second item, and eggplants. Eggplants is our third, and then you'll want to draw arrows. I'm going to give you time. Um, try doing the rest of them on your own. Pause me if you need to. And um, actually, I'm about to run out of time. Go ahead and do that. And then when you're done, start part two of this lesson.